Do many people who visit your office know about this and what it does? No, it, it, it basically takes about 10 minutes to even explain what, what the gist of it is. But most people know that I've got seven or eight computers working all the time in my office on something. What do they think about that? I think they think it's a bit nutty. Uh, <laughs> and I guess a lot of people think that too. What do you think? I think it's probably worth it. Uh, time will tell. Uh, to most physicists, I guess, lambda probably means the length of a wave. Uh, it means how long is the distance between one peak of a wave and the next one. Very easy to understand water waves traveling along a pond. But uh, to many engineers, and particularly people who do dynamics, uh, lambda means an eigenvalue. It's a special value, a special number that you get out of a matrix that tells you something very important about the nature of that matrix. Uh, the word is eigenvalue. Um, uh, some people would call them proper values or characteristic values. It's a mixture of a German word and a, an English word, obviously, eigenvalue is. And I'm not sure what the exact literal translation is, but it means a special number that characterizes the matrix. And if you have a matrix that is 10 by 10, that has 10 rows in it and 10 columns of numbers in it, uh, it will have 10 eigenvalues. People often ask, well, what physical significance uh, can there be to eigenvalues? And I can show you two uh, very simple instances of that. One has to do with vibration. And if I cantilever this ruler off the side of the bench and excite it with some initial condition, then you see that the ruler goes into an oscillation, and the oscillation gradually dies away. And we see two different parts to the vibration of this ruler. One is the oscillating part, which has a certain frequency, and I'm going to guess that that's about four times per second, about four hertz. But also you see the decay part, that the oscillations are getting smaller and smaller and smaller as we go through time. And the lambda has both of those parts built into it. So there's one good example. This is a very simple structure. In engineering, we have to analyze very complex structures that have excitations, not just some giant person flicking uh, the end of the structure, but they have sinusoidal excitations from motors turning and from loads moving backwards and forwards that, if they hit an eigenvalue, really will shake that structure to bits. And a second physical application uh, for eigenvalues is also demonstrable with a ruler, and it's the buckling load of a ruler. Now, if you stand a ruler up vertically, you can put a certain amount of weight on the top of it, and it will stay perfectly steady. And as you increase the amount of weight, and I'm doing this with my hand, uh, it will remain steady until you come to a certain point, and it's just happened here, where the load is just too much for the ruler to bear. And that particular load is called a critical load or a buckling load for the ruler and you find that out by doing a calculation which is an eigenvalue problem. I, I know of one other application that probably everybody in England uh, uses uh, eigenvalues every single day and that is the Google search engine. Uh, it formulates its search problem as a giant eigenvalue problem with a matrix that probably, I'm guessing, has millions of rows and millions of columns sparsely populated, not not a number in every single place, and it calculates the eigenvalues of this huge matrix and uses that to determine which entries should it show you first. Uh, the, the problem of finding out eigenvalues is quite specialized to different sorts of systems, and my particular interests are in so-called second-order systems, so problems where you don't just have one matrix, you have three matrices. This is the quadratic eigenvalue problem for uh, three matrices K and D and M. K represents the stiffness of a structure, D represents the damping, M represents the mass of that structure, and the key word is isospectral. The spectrum is the set of eigenvalues for a system, and I am making an isospectral transformation. I already know what the equation is, that describes these flows, I'm looking to find the solution to the equation. And I'm using the computers behind you to do that. And, and I have been using those for several years. How often are these running? Uh, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Uh, the black one is running all the time. Some of the other ones I switch off when I'm not uh, able to give it much time. So typically, I, in, a, in a working week, I can only give this 10 minutes in the morning, and that has to do just to keep it going. And in those cases, I have two of them. Uh, running alongside the black one, but if it's the middle of uh, a vacation I have four running and I update it twice a day 
Uh, last summer I figured out a way that made it quite a bit quicker and, uh, and I thought that that would probably get me there inside a year and in fact that's still not there. Um, this coming summer probably I'll find out a way to make it even quicker. 